Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and add in some windows on the second floor. Nothing special here, guys. I'm not holding you to like these sort of like crazy stuff. Just pop a couple windows in here so this thing looks like somewhat legit. I'm going to pop a couple in over the uh, over the other areas as well, just to goof around. I don't I don't know why I'm doing it. I'm just doing it because I can. Um, I'm going to look at this thing in 3D again. Look, it's beautiful. You got an ugly warehouse building, whatever. We don't really care. We're just learning how to use Revit right now. All right. So now that we got windows, we've got second floor walls. We've got second floor doors. We've got a staircase. We've got railing. We've got a lot of stuff going on. You guys should feel very much accomplished. Um, now we're going to do one more thing. And we're going to actually add a roof to our home. Um, and we're just going to play around with it. And I'm going to try to remember how to do this since I haven't done a roof and God only knows how long in Revit, but we're going to, we're going to work our way through it. So, um, just like with any of the other commands, we got to be where we want it. So I actually want the roof at the roof level. And so now I have a major, major concern, a major concern. I have no clue where my drawing's at. I have no clue where my building's at. I, I, I don't know anything. Can you guys even see my building right now? If you guys click on roof, can you guys see your building? Can nope. anybody see? Nope. So nobody can see their building. So how would we put the roof where it needs to be if we don't even know where our building is? Won't you just um extend like the, um, the walls so that it goes over the roof line that you had on the on the east so, remember so and then you Irving remember that the that the top of the walls are connected to the roof plane so if I try to extend the roof up it's actually just going to extend the walls up with the roof and I can't if I push the roof down it's actually going to lower the walls so so that's not really going to give us what we need um and guys, I don't expect you guys to ever be able to guess this. So obviously I'm just going to show you what it is. But what, one of the things that, that happens in Revit is remember what we're doing with Revit, right? All we are doing is we're building a 3D model. All these views are, are different pictures of this 3D model. There's nothing more to it. These are literally photographs of this model. So we spent all this time to, to design this model. The floor plan is literally just a view of the model. And we tell the view to show us certain things in certain ways. You can see here, like, it's showing me these are all dotted because remember floor plans are cut at like the five foot mark. So it's showing that these are solid, these are above the view. So we're doing a whole lot inside of Revit. So what I need to do is I need to go to the roof plan and I need to tell Revit what I wanna see. So one of the things that I can uh, one of the things that I can do over on the left hand side is I can tell it what I want to see. And so one of the sections here is called underlayment or underlay. So right now it's set to none. Okay. If I highlight this and say, you know what, I want to see my second floor on this plan, and I hit apply, all of a sudden now I'm able to see a grayed out version of my second floor plan. So again, I'm going to step through that one more time. Um, normally it's set to none on the roof plan. Okay. So quite simply, we can't see anything. I'm just coming over here right now. All I'm in is I'm in the properties. So this property is actually telling me properties about my, my plan itself, not about a specific object. And so some things that you can set in here is what disciplines they are, right? So we're doing the architectural. We know this is an architectural discipline, which is automatically going to name the page in A. If we were if we were doing electrical work, it would automatically name the page with an E. So again, Revit's really smart in that way. Uh, the thing that I'm going to focus on here is actually midway down, and it just says underlay, underlay base level, and I want to put the second floor as my underlayment and I'm gonna hit apply, all right? So now I can see my second floor, which helps because now I can see where my perimeter walls are. And quite simply, I'm gonna add a roof. And just like we did with the floor, 
we're gonna do we're gonna do a pick. However, don't start clicking yet because up here on the options, there's a really important little thing that says overhang. And for this example, we're just gonna set this to 12 inches. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start selecting. Um, oops. Remember, it defaults to it defaults to um, to feet. So I messed that up. Uh, let's do that again. I'm going to hit roof, and instead of hitting 12 this time, I'm just going to hit 1 because I want it to be 1 foot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click here. And I'm going to click here. And you'll see here it kind of makes a box for me. See these little arrows right here? Those little arrows or those little tri arrows. Those little triangles show me that it's going to be a, um, a slope-defining roof, which I will explain to you guys in just a moment. Uh, this right here tells me what the slope is. It's it's the rise and run is nine inches over every twelve inches. We're gonna go ahead and hit OK. Um, again, we just kept it generic roof. We didn't change any of the settings. And now we're gonna look at this thing in 3D. And there we go. The world's ugliest building that you will ever design. You guys just did it. Right? Now, one thing I really don't like about it, I hate it. These here should just be gables on the end. All right, so I'm going to pause for a minute, let you guys get caught up to, to adding your roof. I'm going to step back through the roof and narrate my process one more time. So I'm going to go in the roof. I'm going to make sure that my underlayment is set to second floor. So I would just basically change that from none to second floor. I'm going to hit the apply button. I'm going to hit the roof button at the top. I'm going to set my overhang to one foot. I'm going to use my pick wall and select all four of the perimeter exterior walls. So I'm just going around the perimeter. Once I have that, I hit the check mark. You'll see a roof pop up. You'll go to 3D and you're going to visualize this or you're going to double check and verify that you have a roof. And I want you guys to do me a favor. As soon as, um, as soon as you have a roof, hit your raise hand button. I don't know what Siri is doing right now. My virtual machine is Oops. Uh, let's see here. I don't feel accomplished. <laughs> Marie, it's a beautiful model. No judging. Um, is there any chance you could go through the roof one more time? I think I'm just, I can't do it at the same time because what I need to see is cut off when I have my screen split. Sure, sure. So I thought I could find the buttons anyway, but I flunked <laughs> that. Okay. I'll hit the roof one more time. So I'm going to go to my second floor. I'm sorry. I'm going to go to my roof level. I'm going to verify that over on the left-hand side in the properties palette under underlayment that I have second floor turned on and I hit apply. And that's going to allow me to see the second floor plan on my roof layer. It's not actually there. It's actually below it. It's just saying, hey, you want to see it below it so you can trace things or steal information from the lower level. That's what we're doing. So my next step is to go up, hit the roof button. On the options bar, which is this horizontal bar, the blue bar, green bar, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to change that overhang to be one foot. 12 inches and then essentially all I'm going to do is go around the perimeter of the exterior of my home and select the four exterior walls and then I'm going to hit the check mark and quite simply I should have my beautiful home at that point point. and so do me a favor as you get your roof go ahead and hit the uh, raise hand button where is the roof button? I think that's my problem. I can't find it. It's under the architecture tab. You've got walls, doors, windows, components, column, roof. 
Oh, my icon is not the same at all. Are you using it's the virtual a, machine? Yeah, it's um, it's actually looks like a grid. It says roof, but it looks like a grid. That's really weird. Okay, I found it. Okay, okay. All right, guys, normally I would end right now, but I want to take two more minutes and just finish this up because we're so close to being done, and then we'll be done for today. Actually, we'll be done for the week. Um, and again, I will post these videos up on YouTube as soon as we're all done class and get those sent off. So the only thing I want to do is I don't like the way that this roof looks. I want to I want to um, make this end a reverse gable, and I want to make the other end a reverse gable. So... Um, I don't have to redo the roof. I just have to edit the roof. So I want you guys to pay attention to this because this is a little this is a little complex, but it'll make sense as soon as I do it. I'm gonna highlight the roof. I'm gonna click on the button that says Edit Footprint. Okay, and so now I'm doing this in 3D uh, so that I can kind of push around. I don't want this wall to be roof or to be slope defining. So this is a little bit tricky. I have to left click on that line and then I have to right click on that line. And there's a little button right there. It's a third thing down and it says toggle slope defining. And I want to show you, you'll see that that little, that little triangle and the nine over 12 went away. And so that, that, that indicates to me that I did that right. So I'm going to slope, I'm going to come over to this other side. I'm going to left click on this line. I'm going to right click on that line and then I'm going to hit toggle slope defining again. Again, you'll see that that little triangle went away and that little nine inch over 12 inches went away. And then quite simply, I'm just going to hit the, um, the check mark. And you'll see now, I look at this in 3D, my roof now has that desired result that I was looking for. Now, obviously, somebody's going to point out my my shortcoming on this roof. There's kind of a big gaping hole where everything in the world could come in, right? Everybody has that big gaping hole, I hope. That looks like how I do my Minecraft houses because I get too lazy to fill in the hole. All right, well, can I show you guys a magic little button? Okay, check this out. I'm going to highlight this wall. And there's this beautiful little button that says attach top. And I'm just going to click it. And then I'm going to click the roof. Okay, I'm going to do it again for the other side. Ready? I'm going to highlight the wall. I'm going to hit this button that says attach top. And then where do I want to attach it? I want to attach it to the roof. So I click on the roof. And what you guys should have is now this. I want you guys to give yourselves a round of applause. Because that, that, that right there is just... Phenomenal architecture. I know you guys are so blown away at the architecture you guys have created. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop.